The Critical Friends Protocol is a structured process for people to give and receive feedback to improve their work. It's designed in a certain way because it can be difficult for people to give feedback diplomatically or to hear feedback and not get defensive. It can be used with work in progress to get feedback on it to improve it or at the end of a piece of work to reflect on the results. And it can be used by students, teachers, or school leaders. The protocol was first developed by the Coalition of Essential Schools back in the 1990s and used a lot by the National School Reform faculty. It was also called the Tuning Protocol because it was used to fine tune a piece of work. At the Buck Institute for Education, we use the Critical Friends Protocol during our project-based learning workshops to help teachers get feedback while they're designing their project before they launch it with students. And our school and district partners use it in the same way. Here's how the protocol works. There are three roles. There's a facilitator who gives directions and keeps time. There's a presenter team, or one person perhaps, who shares their work. And an audience of colleagues who give the feedback. Before the protocol begins, the facilitator sets up the room, and typically people sit in a circle or perhaps around a table. The presenters prepare to summarize their project design and identify a couple of questions they might like particular feedback on. The protocol has seven steps, which can be done in a minimum of 20 minutes, or you could expand the time to 30 minutes if you want. The first step is presentation. The second step is clarification. The third step is assessment. The fourth step is the I like feedback. The fifth step is the I wonder feedback. The sixth step is reflection by the presenters. And the seventh step is I have discussions. In the first step, the presenters explain their project and state any questions they'd like feedback about. The next step is clarification, when the audience members can ask clarifying questions to be sure they understand the project. These are questions of fact that can be explained quickly by the presenters, like what grade level are your students? How long is the project? What standards are you targeting? It's important for the facilitator to make sure the audience is not starting to offer feedback at this point. Next step is assessment, when the audience has some brief, quiet time to think about what feedback they would offer. They might use a rubric or some other criteria to base their feedback on. Now the feedback begins in the next step. The presenters have to stay silent during the feedback. Sometimes they might even be asked to turn their chairs around. This prevents them from feeling like they have to explain or defend themselves. It gives them a chance to reflect on the feedback and decide what they find useful and what they can just ignore. First, the audience says what they like about the project. I like how this connects to the community, or I like the idea of creating a music video. Next step, the audience shares what they're wondering about the project. Here's where they can raise concerns, but they shouldn't give direct advice. Putting the feedback in the form of a question is more diplomatic. It allows it to be heard. The feedback should start with an I wonder. For example, I wonder if the driving question will sound engaging to students. When they're giving feedback, the audience members talk to each other, not directly to the presenters. That's why they refer to the project and not your project, or I like how they, rather than I like how you. And the presenters just listen quietly and take notes. In the next step, reflection, the presenters can talk again and reflect on what they heard. They don't need to respond to every piece of feedback. Just think aloud about how they might change their project design or do something differently. In the final step, I have, Everyone may talk about other ideas for the project. The audience can share any resources or ideas they might have to add to the project. The Critical Friends Protocol is a great way to promote a professional learning community and it's an effective way to improve project design and really create a team spirit among colleagues or students during a project. <laughs>